from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report, our top stories this week. We report on the latest developments with the South African Air Force's new Gripen fighters. Ten new South African race records are set during the second South African Solar Challenge. And the CSIR is doing advanced research work for European airliner manufacturer Airbus. The South African Air Force is successfully implementing its Gripen fighter project, Keith Campbell reports. Some 65% of the maintenance on the South African Air Force's new Saab Gripen fighters can now be done locally. And this proportion will increase as the Gripen force has not yet reached full strength and steady state operations. South Africa has ordered 26 Gripens, of which 15 have been delivered so far. The South African Air Force recently graduated its first Gripen pilots and its first Gripen strike navigator trained in Tali in South Africa. Previous Gripen aircrew had received part of their training in Sweden. The pilots are Major Catherine Labeskachny, Major Lance Matabula and Lieutenant Colonel Geis van der Volt, while the strike navigators Lieutenant Kubindra Chetty. While Lieutenant Colonel van der Volt was already a fighter pilot, he flew the Cheetah from 2003 to 2005, both Matabula, who graduated a week before the others, and Labeskachny are new to supersonic fighters. Labaskakni is also the first woman Gripen fighter pilot in the world. Following the solo flights in the Gripen, all were subjected to the traditional ice water bath for aircrew newly graduated on a fighter jet. Training to be a Gripen pilot, from recruitment to first solo flight on the fighter, takes about six and a half years. This comprises three months of basic military training, three months of officer's forming course, one year at the military academy, and five years of increasingly complex flying training divided into three tiers. The first tier is 180 hours flying on the Astro Trainer aircraft, after which the pupil pilots win their wings. The second tier is 390 hours on the Hawk Fighter Trainer until the pilots are flight leader qualified. And finally, 70 hours of operational conversion onto the Gripen. Ten new South African race records were set during the second South African Solar Challenge with the world champion solar car, the Takai Challenger, from the Takai University in Japan, taking the chequered flag at the end of the 10-day event. Irma Fenta has more. The Takai Challenger travelled 4,061 kilometres during the Solar Challenge, the furthest distance on solar power in a single South African event. The futuristic-looking car, at some points reaching speeds of 120 kilometres an hour, also travelled the furthest distance on solar power in a single day, clocking up 565 kilometres. Pretoria's Star Trek entry covered the furthest distance for a South African entry using solar power in a single event, 728 kilometres, while also setting a new day record for distance covered on solar power, 126 kilometres, by a South African vehicle. The Johannesburg German School, in its Sonnenbrandt solar power vehicle, travelled the furthest distance on solar power in a single event by a South African school at 484 kilometres. Sonnenbrandt also travelled 95 kilometres, the furthest distance by a South African school in one day. In the technology class for petrol and or hydrogen fuel cell hybrids, the University of Johannesburg's Bar 1 hybrid vehicle travelled the furthest distance in a single South African event, reaching 1,845 kilometres and the furthest distance in a day at 472 kilometres. The Bar 1 combines hydrogen fuel cells with an electric motor and a Yamaha R6 motorbike engine. The fuel cells and electric motor add enough power to keep the revolutions down on the motorbike engine, which reduces emissions significantly. The Schluckspecht electric vehicle, entered by the Offenburg University of Applied Sciences from Germany, covered the furthest distance in a single day in the technology class for electric vehicles at 1,174 kilometers and the furthest distance in a day at 340 kilometers. Organizers hailed the efforts by all competitors in the 2010 event. Every team has been superb said Solar Challenge Director Winston Jordan as he issued a challenge to universities, technology groups and research institutions from South Africa and across the world to build a car and compete in the 2012 Solar Challenge. South Africa's Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is doing cutting-edge research for Airbus. Keith Campbell has the story. 
The work is being done by the CSIR's Defence, Peace, Safety and Security Research Area. I asked Advanced Computational Methods Research Group leader, Dr. Arno Milan, to outline the work they are doing for Airbus. Um, we've been having a global partnership, international partnership with Airbus for probably about two and a half years now. And um, the idea has been to develop or, uh, or apply some of the multi-physics um, modeling technology that we, had, we, we, that we have, which is really mathematical technology and um, develop it in such a way that it can actually start being applied uh, to some of the cutting edge problems that they are faced with today. So what we really do is we start combining engineering intuition um, with some advanced math and programming and then start producing technology that will enable engineers to quantify certain physics um, to the types of accuracy that would give um, them real in-depth insight that they may not have today. Why would a company like Airbus be interested in this? They're looking at safer, more competitive de designs for, the, for, for tomorrow. They're looking at next generation engineering tools. And this is where the sort of technology comes in. And this is where applied mathematics today is really starting to make enormous impact. And it's really a group effort. Um, there are a number of very bright people working in the group, um, including Dr. Oliver Oxtoby. And um, sort of, you know, we've been able to, to roll out some technology um, in collaboration with Airbus over the last two years that is really starting to, to look like very promising technology and really starting to make impact. Um, and and it's, it's, it's showing itself up on the world stage more and more as, as really leading technology in the field of industrially applicable applied mathematics. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.